welcome. I am so excited to see you all. I'm Judy Utah. I'm the president of the Orange County Asperger Support Group. And I'm really excited by today's topic, which is your first look at the Autism and Entertainment Conference. We have been working on this for a year, and this feels like we're actually getting started by having this session. So I'm glad you're out there. I can see from looking at the participants list that we have some people that are actually gonna be speaking at the conference in the audience. We have some people that are gonna be the crew helping work on the conference while we're there. So uh, we, who knows who's gonna add some value uh, in today's session. We're a nonprofit that is focused on helping high functioning adults and teens who are dealing with, um, with autism improve their quality of life. Um, and we do that through three things. We do it through educational sessions. We do that through support activities. And we do that through um, social activities. is this is where all the information about the conference is stored. It's where our registration information is. It's where our speaker information, there's information about our sponsors, et cetera. But I'm gonna go to our speakers page because there's a really exciting video that I wanna share. We have a series of six videos we're doing called uh, Spectrum Spotlight. This one features animator and educator Danny Bowman. And with that, I'd like to share with you this wonderful video. Hi, I am Dini Bowman, founder and CEO of Deanimation Entertainment, an animation company that I started in 2009, and I also happen to be on the autism spectrum. has always been part of who I am and I evolved to also become an educator. When I was three years old before I could speak, my parents had an abundant collection of VHS tapes of animated movies. I used to pause the VHS a second forward each time, rewind it and play the clip again. So I decided to try it with my plush toys and a camera by moving them and taking a picture. Move them, take a picture, move them, take another picture. Then I would ask my parents to develop the film. When I would get the film back, I would flip it like a flip book. Right here I have a flip book example, a wonky face. At age 11, when I moved in with my aunt and uncle, I showed them my picture books and animation that I had been working on just by using PowerPoint, MS Paint, and Adobe Photoshop. The first animation software I was introduced to by my uncle was Toon Boom Studio which gave me the idea to start an animation company. I was just 11 and I didn't understand the reality of being my own boss. However, my aunt and uncle did take me seriously and help me develop my company by helping me create a website. But I needed my aunt and uncle as my team to make it happen because nobody does it alone. It's important to have a team. Since then, I've received a BFA in animation in 2018 and an MBA in Global Strategy and Leadership in 2020. One of the challenges was, first of all, learning to accept my autism. Growing up, I was not told that I have autism. I didn't know what that was until age 11 when I moved in with my aunt and uncle. It was a blessing because I could do all these amazing things I probably would not be able to do if it wasn't for my autism. Well, first of all, if someone would like to pursue a career, it could be animation or anything, there is no age limit. I started my company when I was 14 years old. Hello. Second, it's okay to ask for help. Nobody does it alone. Get a strong team behind you of people that really believe in you and your mission. Just like my aunt and uncle who believed in my mission. 
Third, remember to get out of your comfort zone. Push yourself because nobody is going to do it for you. I know it's difficult for me to push myself as well, but that's part of growing up. Diligence and organization are the keys to a successful independent living adult. Also remember, it's not only about the more you learn, the more you earn. Apply what you learn. If you're striving to get a degree based on your passion, it's more than about getting straight A's in class. However, don't fear failure. Everyone fails at one time or another, and that's part of the learning process. No matter how bad failure may feel, you must keep trying as long as you can. Don't compare yourself to others. Everyone has different career paths. That is the reason why you must find your passion first. And always be grateful for what you already have and you will attract more good things. And take advantage of many networking opportunities depending on your passion and field. Take classes outside of college based on your passion and go to conferences and events. Don't listen to the naysayers. Just because they said you cannot do this or you cannot do that, just look straight at them and say, yes, I can and I will just watch me. First, being part of the entire animation process and seeing the final product. And I enjoyed watching my students that I teach at animation workshops unleash their creativity by creating their short films. I love going and being part of animation events, like film screenings, panels, and conventions locally and around the country. The superpowers I possess is the ability to hyperfocus and to stay on task. I also have the eagle eyes to see any small details. I have a passion of endless research and the ability to communicate the same language as my autistic peers. Not literally, what I mean the same level of communication and sharing common interests in animation. But I just want to say a minute, say a few things about that video. First of all, we have an autistic crew. So what we're trying to do in these little videos, which we're making, as I mentioned, six of them, is to show what you guys can accomplish. And so um, I'm really excited that I could share that with you. Uh, Marlene is here. Marlene entered it in a competition where it's already a part of a competition. So we're hoping we can win some uh, recognition for that video. And I, I also wanted to share it too, because one of the things that Danny talks about is getting out of your comfort zone and going to this conference is a critical part of that. Okay, so what are we going to do today? So I'm going to give you just a quick view of the conference at a kind of a hundred foot level. Rebecca Bean, who uh, is with Zavacon and is my partner in crime. Zavacon has been partnering with me on this conference since the very beginning, and they're our exclusive job development partner for this conference, doing a ton of wonderful things. Um, and she's gonna talk a little bit about what you can do to prepare, as well as an insight into the business participation in this. Uh, Marlene Sharp, who is with uh, Brainstorm Productions, will talk about a couple of tracks, the game design track and the animation track. And then Elaine Hall, who is the founder of the Miracle Project, is going to talk about the actors track. And finally, Diane Strand, who's the founder of JDS Creative Academy, is going to talk about the film and TV track. All, all of these people are actively partnering with us on this conference. We have a educational partner um, program, which the Miracle Project Brainstorm Productions, JDS Creative are all a part of, and we're having 11 educational partners participate in this event. This is some background on us, which I already talked about a little bit. So let, let me just explain, give you a, an, an idea about what where this conference came from and, and what it's gonna be about. And somebody is writing on the screen, which I don't appreciate. Um, 
So it's a one day event. It's gonna be on April 5th at the Skirball uh, Cultural Center. Uh, we are putting this on, uh, uh, two years ago, I started a working group of people who are interested in advancing employment for people on the spectrum and specifically in the entertainment space. We see a lot of work has been done in the technology space. And it was our view that that same level of success that software developers were seeing in computer related jobs should be there for people who are interested in the entertainment industry. We applied for a grant with the Department of Developmental Services and got one, which was huge. They had about $10 million to give away. We didn't get all $10 million, but they gave it away to about 50 different organizations who are doing creative things to improve employment for people with disabilities. We, they have been wonderful to work with and they made a lot of concessions for us. One concession that's important that you should be aware of is although this their funding is primarily focused on regional center clients, we got them to agree that 25% of the people attending this event could be not could be non-regional center served. So if you are not a regional center client, please do apply and, and you will be strongly considered to attend. Now, this conference isn't for people who fantasize about being in the entertainment industry. It's not about people only for people who have a passion. It's for people who are ready to work, who have gone through training, maybe in college, maybe at Exceptional Minds, maybe at one of the other educational partners, but who, who have put in the effort to develop the skills and are ready to work. So if you applied and you're in high school and you have one year of, you know, you've got one year of being in plays in high school, you're probably not going to get accepted. It doesn't mean that we don't value you. It doesn't mean that we don't want you to invest your time in, and we're going to do other things for you. But this conference is about creating employment. We are seeing hundreds and hundreds of people apply, many of whom have amazing resumes already in terms of experience, but they haven't been able to get started. So I just wanted to share that with you. And the goal of this conference is not only for people on the spectrum to get them, get them started, but also to inspire entertainment companies to be thinking when they're thinking diversity, to be also thinking about neurodiversity and for them to value you as employees. So it's really important that we're also including businesses and making sure that they come. We are partnering with four regional centers. You don't have to be served by these regional centers, but we wanted to have very close relationships. These, all these regional centers are kind of uh, in the area of, of serving the, the geographies where many entertainment companies are located. And we want this to serve as a model for other vertical markets, maybe healthcare, maybe education. There are a lot of different areas where people on the spectrum can work. And a lot of times they take a horizontal view. And so what we see is a lot of opportunities maybe in retail or maybe um, in some service organization, Amazon or something, but we do, we're not seeing it in specific careers where after somebody goes to college, they're ready to advance their careers. So we're hoping that this serves as a model for other uh, industries. This is some information about the Skirball. It's a beautiful, beautiful location. It's located be off the 405 freeway between Sunset Boulevard and the 101 freeway. Um, the doors are gonna open at 8 a.m. The conference starts at nine. There will be th about 380 attendants, uh, attendees. We will be serving meals throughout the day. There will be sponsor tables. A lot of these are educational partners, but we are talking to some businesses who might want to have tables so that they could potentially meet um, possible employees. So here's a view into the conference. It's still settling down. There's still some things that could change or details that are being fleshed out. So. The keynote is going to be given by Jorge Gutierrez. Jorge is a well-known animator 
and director and happens to be on the autism spectrum. And he's going to talk about his journey. Then we're going to have a focus on employers. As we mentioned, we want to get employers excited about hiring from this population. So we're going to have some employers talk about their experience and also about some of them have worked very closely with exceptional minds, uh, having them do production work for them. So we're going to share that. Zavacon, Rebecca Bean will be there talking about how companies can work with Zavacon or uh, in implementing a neurodiverse uh, employment uh, program. We then have a section called Talent Talks. Uh, Zara Astra, who is a producer and director and also happens to be on the spectrum, will be moderating that. And she and Scott Steindorf co-produced a film called Understanding Autism, which will be streaming uh, starting this spring. And they will be interviewing or having discussions with other people on the autism spectrum who are currently uh, actively working in the entertainment space. We'll break for lunch and then in the afternoon, we'll hear from Michael Luna, who is a, a director at the Department of Developmental Services and Hilary Kakenda, uh, who's with Zavicon, talk about what programs are available through the government to help both people on the spectrum as well as employers to advance working in the entertainment space. In the afternoon after that, we have breakout sessions. We have six different breakout tracks, one for animation, game design, film and TV and acting, and then two for businesses, one for small employers and one for large employers. So I saw some notes about the application process. Think of it like going to college. When you apply to college, you apply and then you get in and then you register. You don't start off applying and then show up the first day of college and say, I'm here. You need to be accepted and need to register. The same is true for this conference. Because we're looking for particular type of people, we are seriously every day reviewing the applicants and choosing uh, individuals to attend. There are 120 spots. We've already filled over 75 of them. Okay, so it's a very competitive situation. And if you haven't applied yet, you need to apply now. And apply yourself. Don't have your parents apply for you. This is about demonstrating that you are ready to work. And your mom and dad are not going to come with you into the office and show up on your first day of work. So you need to take, take your career into your hands and apply yourself. Uh, so this is, we're shooting to have 75 different companies attend, 120, uh, what we're calling you folks are, are talent, as well as uh, if they're in need of an aide or a caregiver to attend with them, they can. We have over 50 speakers and then we'll have volunteers and guests. We are looking for volunteers. So if say you're a parent and you're, child is still in high school, maybe you might want to volunteer. There's a lot of information available. These are on our website, but there's a flyer and there's a brochure that goes through all the details. And then tomorrow we will be um, unveiling our speaker's bio. So there'll be a page available where you'll be able to read the background of all the speakers who are um, going to be speaking at the conference. And that is our website. Okay, I'm really excited to have Rebecca uh, speak to you all. Rebecca is amazing. She's been working in this field for a very long time. And as I mentioned, a strong partner of OCSG and this conference. Rebecca. Thanks, Judy. Um, I just want to do a call out for Judy. She's been putting so much energy and effort and time into creating a wonderful event. So um, thank you, Judy, for everything that you're doing. I'm Rebecca Beam. I'm the founder and CEO of Zavicon. And Zavicon is an employment agency and a consulting firm that focuses on placing individuals who are neurodivergent and those with disabilities in career-oriented employment. And we do it in a supported manner. 
We are thrilled to be part of the sponsorship of this um, conference and, and helping to put it together. One of our main goals is to bring employers um, in so that they can meet the participants. And these employers are uh, major studios, gaming companies, um, smaller production facilities, um, companies that are willing to open their doors. And um, so we're, we're thrilled to be part of that. And we're working very hard to bring the employers in. One of the things I wanted to focus on today is just going over a few tips on how to be your best at the event and how to prepare for the event. This is a networking opportunity. It is not a job fair, although we're hoping to have employers there that you can meet, um, perhaps um, members of their talent acquisition teams. So you do need to be prepared to present yourself well to them, but it is a networking opportunity. So I'm gonna share with you some of the tips that um, you might wanna think about when coming to the conference. I'm gonna share my screen. Okay, so Zavacon, we are the bridge to inclusion. And um, so our mission I, I talked about, um, we believe that every there's a job out there for everyone to apply their talents and skills in a meaningful way. So our mission is to match qualified candidates with disabilities and those who are neurodivergent with employers who believe inclusion is the future. Um, our vision is to change the unemployment, underemployment rate for our community. And we do this through recru recruitment and all of the service that, services that we offer. So I wanna get straight to it because I know we have a lot to cover today. So I wanna talk about things that you can do to prepare yourself for this conference. And the first thing is to be confident in yourself and your skills. Not overconfident, but you do wanna, you do wanna stand out and you wanna leave a lasting impression. People are nervous when they have to walk into a large room or a large event. So it's really normal for people to be nervous. So just step outside of your, you know, nervousness, be confident and approach people. There might be people standing in the corner, go and introduce yourself to them. Um, you never know who you might meet. Brush up on your public speaking skills. Be confident in the way that you present yourself. So you can practice in front of the mirror and we'll get to, you know, practicing your elevator speech in a minute. You have to look the part. Part of looking the part is showing up, right? You got to show up and show up on time, but no, no sweatpants. You know, you want to be professional. It's okay to wear jeans, but no holes in your jeans. Wear a collared shirt. Press your shirt, look nice. Don't wear flip flops, wear shoes, be very presentable. Your personal hygiene matters for this event. So make sure that you are ready and looking your best. Because when, when people say, you know, if you look good, you feel good, it is so true. So wearing something that makes you feel good will build your confidence for this gathering. So your elevator pitch. That is like 30 second to 60 second pitch about who are you? You know, one of the most common conversation starters are so, so what do you do or where do you work? And you want to be able to get in this meeting who you are out to the person that you're meeting. So that's what's called an elevator pitch. And it's, you know, start by identifying, you know, what your goal is. What are you trying to achieve at the conference? Introduce yourself, explain what you do, and don't be afraid to have an ask at the end of it. But it has to be a subtle ask. It needs to be like, I would like to meet more people in my industry. Do you have anybody that you can introduce me to? Or may I have your business card? Don't dominate the conversation. You might want to try to ask some questions instead to get to know something about the person you're meeting. Um, you know, and be an active listener. 
ask follow-up questions, really try hard to listen to what the person is telling you about themselves. You want to be engaging so that you leave a good impression. You can ask questions about, you know, what are you, what's interested you so far in this conference? Have you worked on anything exciting recently or what sessions are you looking forward to attending? Those are all great questions to ask and then remember what they said to you. Keep the conversation short and sweet. You wanna be respectful of your own time, most importantly, but of the other person's time as well. So you might wanna limit your conversations to 10 minutes or less. When you're done, share your business card if you have one or your information so that you can continue the conversation. So I want to talk a little bit about business cards. You can easily get them online. You can order them online. Um, they're not too expensive. Um, if you are not able to do that, you could, you know, put some information on a little piece of paper that you can hand to somebody. Um, a lot of people prefer linking up via social, you know, social ways, but, um, you know, a, a, a tangible business card is not a bad idea. I mean, I still carry business cards everywhere I go, but I'll give you some tips if you prefer not to have a business card. If you do have your business card, you want to have your, your socials, you want to have your contact information, maybe a link to your portfolio or resume, um, anything of value information wise that you want the person to know about you. Um, handing out a business card also makes you appear serious and confident about your approach. If you don't want to go that route, though, there are other routes to go, and that's digital business cards. And it's a new powerful networking tool. Um, you know, they can be edited at any time. They contain information about yourself that you would have on a business card. Um, Hi Hello is just one example of a company that you can create a digital business card on. It's an app on the App Store or Google Play. It's free. You know, there are subscription plans, but you can do it for free as well. And, you know, it's a good way to share your information with somebody. And then it'll also send you a reminder to follow up with that person. So that's really, really cool. Um, there's other options out there. So you can do your research. You can also create a QR code um, of your LinkedIn profile. If you have a LinkedIn profile, just go into the help and say, how can I create a QR code? And it'll walk you through the steps. And you can have that on your phone. You can create a QR code of your portfolio or resume as well. And you can have that on your phone. So that's a really powerful tool. So following up with your new connections is, is the key here, because once you're meeting all of these people and you're networking, it's not one and done. It, they're they're, they're going to be meeting a lot of people just like you. So you absolutely want to make sure that you're, you know, taking notes and keeping up with who you're meeting so that you can follow up like on the next day. Um, and so they all remember who you are. It's okay if you don't do it the very next day, you can wait a couple of days, but make sure you do it. And, and then if they don't answer, they might be getting a lot of emails. You can bring it to the top of their, their um, email box by sending a reminder um, and suggest that you connect on LinkedIn. Uh, end everything on a positive note. Let's keep very positive about things. You know, there's a lot going on in the world today. Keep your conversations lighthearted. Don't discuss politics or religion or share deeply uh, personal information. You want to be very positive in the way that you're approaching people. Um, end on a very positive note. So for example, it has it was nice to have met you. Thank them for their time. Make sure that that you show that you're mindful that their time is very valuable and they shared it with you and you're appreciative. Be yourself, most important part, stay true to yourself, show people who you are genuinely um, so that they you know, can, can have confidence that they want to have you with in their network. Don't miss an opportunity. So when, when you're in between sessions or you're at lunch, Make sure that you're not on your phone, checking your social media or emailing or using Slack or whatever you're on. Go and talk to somebody. Always try to be 
in engaged with people if you can. I understand if you need a little downtime, we're going to have some quiet rooms where you can go and decompress, but by all means, try to talk to as many people as you can. Put your phones down unless you're networking with somebody and getting their contact information. And then we're going to have a table there. We're going to have some volunteers that if you need some support, you can come to us at Zavacon and we can help you. Take notes. Got to really take those notes. So have a note-taking strategy. Hi, hello is as a feature for you to take notes. There's other tools that you can use or you can use an old-fashioned pen and paper. Um, so come equipped um, to take notes and notate who you're meeting and, and their, their details so you can follow up. So real quick, I just want to talk about Zavacon because we are an employment agency. It would really be great if you signed up with us prior to the conference um, so that we already have you in our database and that's all done. Um, we're going to be working with the employers to help them get you hired. So to, to reach out to us, go to info at zavacon.net or you can fill out our contact form online at zavacon.net. We're going to reach out to you and send you some forms and an online application um, and your, uh, some other forms that you'll, you'll fill out. You're gonna meet with one of our recruiters. It'll be a 30 minute meet and greet, um, very casual. We get to know you, what you're looking for. You'll get some additional forms and some assessments. They're very general assessments, nothing to be scared of. Personality questionnaire, computer proficiency and basic skills. This just helps us you know, gauge you know, what types of positions you might really be geared towards. Um, once we get all the information back, we start strategizing. Of course, it's going to be strategizing around this conference. Um, and it's it's free. There, there's no charge to getting signed up with us. Some information for you. Um, here is our website, my email address. Hillary is my lovely business partner, and she is the head of recruiting. Um, or Better yet, reach out to info at zavacon.net and we will be in touch with you um, to get you the forms. We are so excited that you're um, here at this webinar tonight to learn about the conference and we hope to see you there. Um, for those of you who, who get accepted, we are gonna be a resource for you. And again, please make sure to come visit us at our table. And if you need assistance, we'll be there. Thank you, Judy. Thank you so much, Rebecca. And I, I just really appreciate you and your team. You're doing an awesome job. Next up is Marlene Sharp. Marlene and I met through, through just us networking around and eventually we bumped into each other. We kept hearing about each other in every meeting we went to saying, oh, you need to meet this person. And finally we got to meet and it's been wonderful ever since. Uh, Marlene is been very, very active with us in terms of helping us meet uh, people in the gaming industry, helping us meet people in animation, helping us meet people everywhere. And with that, I, I'd like to invite Marlene to come in and say a few words about some of the tracks that she's involved with. <laughs> thank you, Judy. And also thank you to Rebecca. Rebecca's a tough act to follow, um, but I'll, I'll try to do my best. Um, so Judy gave you a little bit of a background of who I am. I'll, I'll dig, I'll go a little bit deeper. Um, I am, first of all, the PR and sponsorships chair of this autism and entertainment conference. So if you have a, a hankering to sponsor in any way, shape or form, let's talk. And, uh, I, I won't go too, too much into the sponsorship aspect of the conference, but um, we are open for business in, in uh, several ways and um, happy to talk about it offline. But um, I came to this planning committee a little bit later than all the rest of the, the folks who are on the committee. Um, I work with one of the educational partners of the conference and, and that is Brainstorm Productions. So Brainstorm Productions is a professional, <clears throat> excuse me, a professional studio that is attached to the Center for Learning Unlimited, which is a school in the South Bay in Torrance. And it has a special 
training program for adults on the autism spectrum to learn about animation as a career choice. And it's a three-year program. I've been a consultant for Brainstorm and CLU for almost four years now. And prior to that, I've worked with a lot of nerd brands that you've probably heard of, like Sonic the Hedgehog and Power Rangers and um, Pink Panther, lots of stuff that start with a P, Paul McCartney too. Um, and uh, I came on board Brainstorm, like I said, as a consultant, consulting producer, job developer, entertainment industry liaison. I helped to open the studio Brainstorm during the pandemic and advised on the, the curriculum as well. And then, as Judy said, we just moved in the same circles and uh, orbited each other. And then we <laughs> bumped into each other. I think it was David Siegel of Exceptional Minds who really like drove the point home, to me anyway, that I should, <laughs> I should get in touch with Judy. So once I did, she recruited me to come on board as a planning committee member and share my base of contacts, as well as knowledge of the video game and animation industry. So I'm wearing several hats within the conference and um, I'm uh, heading a panel on video games. And I'm also, I also have my tentacles into the animation track. So I just wanted to talk about that for a few minutes. First of all, animation, has footprints all over this event. This is a big time animation rah-rah fest because we have our keynote speaker, Jorge Gutierrez of Maya and the Three, Book of Life, uh, El Tigre, he's our keynote speaker and he himself is on the spectrum. Plus we have Danny Bowman, who you saw her documentary a few minutes ago. Um, she is a superstar in the world of animation. Together with Spectrum Labs, she completed a film called Schlitzy, One of Us, recently a theatrical feature. And she's a series regular on Love on the Spectrum. So she's a superstar who has her own animation studio, Danimation. And then uh, my client, Brainstorm Productions and the Center for Learning Unlimited is, is involved as well. Um, we also have um, Game Gen is one of the educational sponsors. And I, I see some of the, their representatives. Jamie Johnson is here, I believe. And uh, he will be on the video game panel. So um, so the way that the, the conference is structured, in the morning, there's a series of general sessions and everyone will attend these. And uh, there are some big animation, um, well-known companies that will be sending speakers to um, be featured in the morning. One of those is Disney, hooray. Uh, they, they've flown under the radar as far as their participation thus far, but, but, but they are in there and committed. We also have Ubisoft as a, a corporate partner and Ubisoft, game company has a really stellar program for neurodiverse individuals. And um, we're excited for them to speak on that in the morning. And then uh, we've got representatives from Sony as well as Nickelodeon. And um, and then, so that's the, the morning session is, is several um, seminars that everyone will attend. Then we have lunch afterwards are the breakout sessions and then folks can choose the track that they want to concentrate on and for those of you who love animation and video games it'll be your lucky day because we've got two separate tracks one for animation one for video games and then they're they're also kind of co-mingled so um as far as video games go we have several esteemed speakers who will be participating, one of whom is um, Chris Tremel. He is the inventor, uh, developer of a famous Sega game called Boogerman. And we also have <clears throat> Warren Davis, 
who created Qbert. And we have Ken Weisselman, who is working with a creator on the spectrum to promote his new video game, Medio Heroes. And he's the executive producer of Teletubbies and Thomas the Tank Engine. Um, then we have uh, Jamie Johnson of Game Gen, whose organization trains neurodivergent individuals for, for careers in the video game industry. And then in, in relation to animation, we also have Neko Productions, uh, Lyrit Rosenzweig Topaz will be speaking. Um, she and her team have been very involved in video game development on a lot of IPs that you would have heard of. Harry Potter, um, Barbie, Sonic the Hedgehog, and so forth. And we also have uh, several other educational partners that straddle the fence between professional studios as well as educational entities. Um, so sometimes the students will go and then do projects on a commission basis. And of course, Exceptional Minds is one of our, our treasured partners and Exceptional Minds has a long standing relationship with Disney and Marvel and um, Exceptional Minds is really the pioneer in at animation education for folks on the spectrum. So I think that concludes my presentation for tonight. I'm a, I'm not as uh, buttoned up as Rebecca. I'm more um, casual and and uh, off the cuff. But Judy, did I forget anything? Did I um, anything no, you want me to yeah, touch yeah. on? Um, the um, end. <laughs> of me. <laughs> One sec. All right, we're waiting for Judy to come back. She may have okay, taken. Sorry, I there have <laughs> a very fancy setup here, and somehow <laughs> somebody set me up so I can't unmute myself on my other screen. So I. I'm now unmuted here, and I'm happy to be introducing Elaine, uh, Elaine Hall, but Elaine asked me to share a short video before she spoke. Elaine, I met fairly late. I met her at the Understanding Autism uh, screening that was part of the Newport Beach Film Festival, and she and I met and became fast friends. And I pulled her in to help so much with our acting track. So let me start by sharing my screen. I'm going to share the video and then he will be all honored to hear from Elaine. So here we go. If I woke up one day and I was a skua, I'd probably fly headfirst into an iceberg. What is he even talking about? Sam, I'll confess I got a little lost there myself. This season, we had the pleasure of bringing in eight new cast members, and they decided to go for all actors that are actually on the spectrum. It's a show, first and foremost, it's about a family, but it's definitely about the autism community, so I wanted as much involvement. Show, first and foremost, it's about a family, but it's definitely about the autism community, so I wanted as much involvement from the autism community as possible. And I loved the idea of this peer group, and it's just been more successful, more fun, and lovely than I even hoped for. And action. I've been acting for a few years now. People on the spectrum definitely deserve a chance to be in the working area. They'll show a different side of us. I got an interview with RISD. Yay, Sam. Are you excited? The fact that the show is hiring actors who actually have autism to play characters with autism is pioneering and very powerful. When I first found out I was on the show Atypical, I felt very honored and it was a dream come true. And today I sang opera in a scene with Sam. <laughs> People connect to these characters in the show because even though the characters are incredibly specific, the themes are very universal. Finding love, 
fitting in, finding your identity. Our actors bring it to life in such a beautiful way and you can just read everything on their faces and they're so expressive and amazing that I think that helps a lot. Who else had an accomplishment this week? I went to a new dentist. Really? How cool, Lily. I enjoy acting in this peer group because I have autism and we have similarities and we can relate to each other. I couldn't find chicken fingers on the cafeteria menu. I'm hoping the online menu is incomplete or seasonal. I feel like working with Kier is really great because he's really awesome. And I feel like his performance was excellent. No chicken fingers? That sounds awful. You shouldn't go. The actors in the peer group obviously have a lot of insight and they also bring their uniqueness. It's good to be unique. If we were all perfect, everything would be boring, you know? Acting is a great equalizer. Those with and without disabilities come together. The most rewarding thing about working on Atypical is just basically breaking stigma around autism. I want to tell Rabia and all the producers they can believe in me because autism is awesomeness. Thank you, Judy, for sharing that. Hi, uh, I'm Elaine Hall, and I'm the person who was on that video that was um, coaching some of the actors uh, on the TV show Atypical. Any of you seen the show Atypical? Yeah, yeah, you can put in the chat, yeah. Great, great, great. Yeah, you know, Spencer. Tyler, that's great. You know, Dom and Spencer. So The Miracle Project um, is a theater and film program for neurodivergent and, um, and neurotypical teens and uh, um, teens, young adults, older adults. And what we do is create original film uh, musicals and theater sharing your voices, your stories on, on stage. And uh, we're also, we're profiled in the HBO documentary, Autism the Musical and Autism the Sequel, which won two Emmys. Separately, I'm a TV and film acting coach. I've been in the business for, for decades. The past 10 to 15 years focusing on neurodivergent actors and uh, screenplays, learning about what is happening in TV and film, and also Broadway, and then bringing my actors from The Miracle Project onto these projects. So that peer group from that you just saw from Atypical were members of The Miracle Project. When, um, Rebecca was talking and, and Judy were talking about studying and knowing your craft. And Danny was talking about that. And everybody was talking about that. You guys are here because you are professionals. First of all, just showing up tonight shows how professional you are, that you are here because you want to, you want to be the best that you can be. You're going to grab every single all the information so that you stand out. And that's what I'm going to be talking about. I say, if you don't fit in, stand out. And if you stand out, shout. And you don't always have to shout with a loud voice. You can shout by being authentic, by being who you are, by being your best, best self. And that's what I help you do. And that's what we work with in the Miracle Project. I want to invite all of you right now just to take a deep breath. Take a breath. I want to hear it. Deep, deep breath. Let me see it. Maybe open your arms, make your arms go up really high. And then let the air out without... Awesome. Awesome. Take one more deep breath. Take a deep, 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 deep breath. Open up. And then open up with a big, big breath of ah. And maybe if you care to, Put your hand on your heart and say, I am here. So say it with me. I am here. Beautiful. There is only one of you. Thank you, Brian, for putting it in the chat. There's only one of you. 
There's only one Brianna, one Jamie, one Adrian, one Kathy, one Vanessa, one Josh, one Diane. And what we're about is helping you to be the best you that you can be. That's what the Miracle Project is about. That's what we'll be talking about on my panel on, um, uh, and uh, I guess it's a Thursday, right? In April. But more than anything, I am here. You're right, Joseph. You are here tonight and you are here in your skin and you are here with your talent and your desire and your dedication. And I want to help you be the best that you can be. Whether you are an actor for live action, TV and film, or theater, or you are talented in editing, voiceover, production work, there's only one of you. And your voice is what matters. Whether you are speaking with your mouth or speaking through typing or speaking through your art, who you are and why you are here is to make a difference. And all of us, I, I, I um, identify as neurodivergent myself. And all of us, we are here to change the way the world perceives neurodivergence, disability, differences. And what, what this conference, I'm so proud and excited to be part of this incredible conference, Judy and, and Rebecca, but we're all part of it. We're all a team, we're all one. When one person shines in our culture, in our community, we open the door for everyone to shine. When one person is representing your field, you're opening the door for more and more and more people. And that's what I think is so extraordinary about this conference is that it's not a bunch of neurotypicals telling us you know, what to do and how to do it. It's all of us sharing with each other and it's parents and um, volunteers. It's a community. And that's what we're about. We're about building this community by being our authentic self. So wait, someone just said something from Pete Townsend. I want to read it. Let my love open the door. Oh, Tyler, that's it. All there is is love, really, right? And you just show up. You show up with your best self. Don't mask. It's hard to say don't mask, but ah, take that mask off, right, Jake? All you need is love. What we want to do is a, we're in a community. The Autism Entertainment Com Conference is about a community, and we're coming because we're going to reveal our authentic self. I do a lot of casting. I work a lot in casting. I read a lot of scripts. And one of the things that's so important is authenticity. I was casting a movie um, a couple of years ago that is actually coming out in May. And um, I looked at 85 12 to 16 year old boys for the character. We were looking for an autistic character who we wanted the, the actor to be autistic, right? We didn't want someone to play autistic. We wanted them to be autistic. And I have to tell you, some of the professional actors who were autistic had spent so many years masking, trying so hard to be typical that they weren't able to just be themselves. And in the audition, you could tell they were, they were like trying to be autistic, right? That's why I want to encourage all of you on these screens today is to be yourself. Only show up as you. We're looking for you. When I cast, I'm looking for you. I am looking for the person that is underneath the mask. And as an editor or in production, they are looking for your unique way of being in the world, your vision, because that's art. So I wanna thank uh, Judy for inviting me tonight. I wanna thank all of you for showing up. You showed up. Just that in itself is a step towards your career. And I hope to see you. I hope to see you in April. And I hope to see you in a soundstage, doing a feature film and showing the world who you are. 
So thank you so much, Elaine Hall, um, the acting live action for TV and film. Thanks, Elaine. Thank you. Yeah, and Elaine has uh, put together a wonderful acting uh, panel, and we also have a special voiceover panel, and our actors will be able to go to both. And there's casting directors, there's agents, there are celebrities who have careers all established. We saw Dom, he's going to be there. So it'll be a wonderful opportunity for our actors to learn what they need to do to get to the next level. But thanks so much, Elaine. Next, I'd like to invite Diane Strand. Diane and I met, it's been about a year now, I think, Diane. And I found her through an apprenticeship program that she offered with a department of rehab. And as I got to know her and JDS Creative Academy, I was blown away by the wonderful work she's done. She has so much experience herself and she brings that to her uh, students at the Academy in Temecula. And lucky for me, Diane has taken time out of her very busy schedule because she has her own conference in April, but to help us out. So Diane, you want to tell us about the film and TV pan uh, production panel and a little bit more about yourself and JDS Creative. Well, thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I'm inspired by everybody who spoke before me. I've been even taking notes and knowing things that I want to talk to all the other speakers about. So I highly encourage um, you all to keep reaching out. Um, and that is one of the biggest tools that I tell everyone as you're trying to break into this industry, how important it is to just show up and to be there and be present. And I think that's a reoccurring theme that I've heard from all the other speakers. Uh, I'm Diane Strand and I'm an executive producer. I founded the nonprofit JDS Creative Academy and we have a job training program in video production and multimedia that helps our students who are on the spectrum, neurodiverse, we help everyone with um, in that work comes and participates in our program that have developmental disabilities reach their goals and their passion. And we do that through um, a couple of different TV shows that we produce and a radio show and a podcast that we have. But to give you a little bit of background on who I am, I did work in the entertainment industry for 10 years. I've worked for Disney and Universal Studios. I worked on the show Friends and General Hospital, and I helped build the high def control room with what was Staples Center. It's now crypto.com. And um, I left that world a good 20 years ago to become an entrepreneur and started making, you know, doing my own production company doing videos for businesses and helping them market and communicate. And then we launched an actor studio and we started working with young actors to help them launch into the industry. And I've helped um, well over a hundred actors start their career in the entertainment industry. And then uh, 10 years ago, we founded a nonprofit. I'm in business with my husband, who's also um, a director and an actor. And we started the nonprofit uh, all about visual performing and digital arts. And that grew into a job training program. Judy mentioned the apprenticeship program. And I partnered with one of our community colleges to start an apprenticeship program so we could help bring those from um, that were emerging into the industry, creating a pathway so they could start to earn what I call smart credits. And you have to put those smart credits on your resume so you can start building that pathway and pursuing your passion. And then we developed that same apprenticeship program to become a Title 17 program where we help uh, special needs uh, individuals reach their passion and pursue their dream. And we teach 
from camera work to editing to audio with animation. They work, we work with writing so you can lurk, work in the scripting aspect. And we sh show them how a production is put together or a new segment or a video segment is put together from the very beginning of concept development all the way through the scripting and then how you take it, how you, we have those that are working on a producing track and learning how to schedule, learning how to connect and communicate with a client or someone you might need to get an interview with and how to be able to put all the pieces together and put put together a video segment and we do that through a tv show that we produce it's called spirit of innovation and then our participants have their own tv show as well which is called soi stories and all of our participants they work on the they work on the soi stories that's where they get to learn some of their writing techniques, as well as then they get to move into doing the camera work or doing the editing work, learning how to do the audio, everything from, you know, learning how to read the menus inside the camera, learning how to understand audio balance, learning lighting, and then being able to then take all that footage and go into editing and then follow the script to be able to put a segment together. Their segments air on their TV show. And then as they earn um, and learn and, and gain experience, they get to then have segments on the main show, which is Spirit of Innovation, which is broadcast all over Riverside County on several different TV stations. Um, as well as we're on binge networks and we stream through YouTube. So we get a really good audience for the TV shows, as well as we're on, we have a radio show. And on the radio show, the participants get to learn a lot about how to write. Um, so they understand how to do a little bit of research and development, as well as then write a segment. And then they get to record it. And then they edit it down. And then that airs on 1025 The Vine, which is broadcast um, here in Riverside County. And they get to do a two and a half minute news update that airs seven days a week, uh, three times a day, as well as then we help our participants get agents and managers and do um, gig work as we call it, so they can go out and freelance and do some gig assignments, as well as we also help place into jobs um, through a paid internship, so they can uh, get some experience for a year building those smart credits. Those are the things that you need to do to have those smart resume credits so that you can show some of the work and the value that you've been um, putting forth and you can share that with others and then start to leverage that to be able to move through the industry. And it depends on what track you're on, whether you're more interested in the production side and you wanna learn the camera work and the audio work, if you like the post-production, you like the animation side, we work with, like right now, we're building a sizzle reel for an animated show that is working with Pixar, and they get to uh, start all the way from concept development, learning how to build your T poses, and then start to animate it and put together to know what a sizzle reel is all about and how you do that when you're pitching into the industry. And so there's lots of different career tracks that you can go on when you're working in this industry. And you have, and we teach it from the bottom up so you can learn the steps that you need to take. And then we help you when you go into those jobs, you'll go with a job coach to be able to go into those positions and start working. And that can be, there's lots of things that you can do if you love video and multimedia you know, we all think about the entertainment industry and all the things that that can bring us, 
But in the video production and multimedia world, I'm a true believer that it touches every industry. And that could be in the marketing and the communications. So we help people learn how to do social media, how to be independent producers, how to be independent videographers and work with um, and work with the team, um, really um, stressing out that importance of collaboration, how you communicate. We start with even the professional skills that you need you know, starting with email and how you reply and are should you reply all to everyone or is this just to reply to one person and how to ask the right questions. So when you might be a little confused and not exactly sure what should my next step be, how to ask those questions. And we build that safe environment at our studio. And then we show you how to create that safe environment when you go out into the workplace. So um, I wanted to share a little bit. I could share my screen here for a second and I can show you some pictures. Um, So this is our group here. Uh, we have a 10,000 square foot studio and we have a green screen and we work with our clients are all from Inland Regional Center and um, they work on the green screen producing the videos. You can see we have, here we are out in the field at Animal Friends of the Valley. And you know here we are in set and on studio doing things but these are some of the things as i move to the next slide um, workforce readiness and some soft skills that are really important you know when you're doing and wanting to work in the industry and things that um, we work with so you learn not only how to hit record on the camera you can learn the menu functions because those things are really important so you can learn the different things about camera angles and and how they invoke different emotions and different things that come with that. And how you would even work with a camera operator because you might start in an internship type position or start as a production assistant, how to make yourself show value so you can get that next SMART credit and you can start working that pathway through um, so you can grow to be able to meet your goals and your passions. We set goals for everyone so we can reach those goals and we can um, definitely celebrate our little wins as well as our big wins. And we can create a passion, an industry of passion. We, we do a lot of fun things. We do some acting. You can see that they're sitting at the computers doing editing. Uh, they're working behind the camera. And that way they have their hands on the equipment. They're sitting down. They're from the script writing. They sit with one of our writers and they do the research and go through all the different aspects. Um, and everyone gets to do a little bit of everything where we're at because I also believe that you have to know all the different aspects of the industry to understand. You know, we all think about, oh, acting isn't that great, and it is, but that's only 10% of the industry. You know, it's actor focused, but at the same time, if you have an actor acting and nobody running the camera to capture it and then nobody to edit it, you have to have all the positions that go with that. So, you know, it's it, there's a lot of different positions in the entertainment industry besides just the ones that you might think of, like the director, the producer, um, the actor. You know, there's the audio people and then there's they have several different positions in audio. There's what you have the A1, you have the A2, you have the engineer. So there's a lot of different steps. And we help people see that just because you come out, you might have some training and you might know how to push the buttons to make Adobe After Effects work or Adobe Premiere. You know, there are steps to learn some of that concept development to put that in there so you can 
put together a full package. So that's what we try and work on are not only the technical skills, but also the soft skills. So you can have a well-rounded experience to be able to move into the industry. Because there's lots of different career paths and different ways that you can pursue your dreams and your passions without stepping into these big, huge shoes out there. You can grow into the shoes that you want to step into and start with those little tiny baby steps, getting an internship, and then turning that into maybe some gig work, and then maybe getting a job, and then you're starting on your pathway. You know, it's even true for someone when, like me, you know, I came out of college and just because I was well-trained and knew all the steps, it didn't mean that I could walk right into those high level, big jobs. You know, I had to start as a production assistant and work my way up and show the value. So that's something that's really important. Um, I know at the conference, I'm going to be uh, talking with some of those experts in editing and lighting and directing, and I'm going to be moderating a panel. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about what all those careers are that put you on that trajectory to be able to find your right position to land in this entertainment industry and how best that's gonna work for you and give you advice as well as give you some training tips and things that you might wanna focus on and learn if that's where you wanna go to pursue your career. So I wanna thank you, Judy, very much for having me here tonight. And I'm very excited for all the things to come. I've been watching your community here interact and it's super exciting. And um, you know, at the same time, you know, if there's anything that I can do for anybody, you can always find us at the hashtag JDS family, and we're happy to help you find your dream with a little bit of hope. Thank you so much, Diane. And, and, and her program is so impressive. But I think one of the takeaways is how many different aspects of the job you may need to know about in order to be career ready. And she talked about the smart points on your, on your resume. And so for those that may not be accepted into this conference, part of the reason we're partnering with all these educational partners is maybe you're not quite ready for working yet. And so maybe you need to sign up with one of these great educational partners and, and hone your skills and get that experience you need so that you can be ready. And, and those organizations are really good at partnering with you and helping you develop those skills. So now uh, we is a time where you can ask your questions. Well, this kind of concludes a wonderful, wonderful evening. It was so great of all of you to come and join us. Uh, thank you, Diane, Rebecca, um, Elaine, who I think might have had to leave, and Marlene, who had to leave. Um, I thank all of you for attending. I'm, I encourage all of you to pursue your passions and, um, and keep educated because it's through building that skill set that you're able to uh, advance in your career. So... I will be, this session has been recorded. We will send it out to you in the next couple of days, but thank you everybody for attending. So thanks.